Hello, vaccinated and unvaccinated alike. I don't care what you've injected yourself with, as long as you're watching. I'm Dave Rubin, this is the Rubin Report Direct Message. It's December 7th, 2021. I believe that you can make medical decisions for yourself. That's what I believe around here. We are live streaming, of course, on Rumble, on YouTube, and on Blaze TV. A uh, lot to get to today. We're mixing up the stories. It's gonna be a, a, little, bit of more, a little bit more of like a, a hodgepodge of stories today. I didn't want to do all the COVID stuff and there's some good signs happening. Something just happened about 10 minutes ago that's really great that we'll kick off with in just a moment. But before anything else, you know, yesterday we were talking about this Kamala Harris woman. She's the the person pretending that she's vice president. Nobody really likes her, you know, polling at zero in her own party when they decided she would be vice president because they would just smuggle her in once Joe has to retire. It doesn't seem like it's going well either. They can't control her. Now there's all these stories leaking out that people don't like her, you know, this, this cackle. And I played the video, that compilation video of the cackle yesterday. I played it, I think, three times on the show. And we looked in the comment section and people were saying, Dave, how could you do that to us? This woman's psychotic. She sounds crazy. You can't keep playing this cackle over and over. I'm, I'm nauseous. I'm vomiting. I, I need help. It's disgusting. So we thought we have one other video that we wanted to show you. Pretty, and your little dog too. <laughs> I mean, that's some fine work we're doing over here. You know what I mean? Connor, that's all Connor right there. Okay, he wakes up, he says, what can I do? How can I put a little, a little more goodness into the world? There's a little uh, Kamala for you. On the good news front though, seriously, like now no joking aside, uh, some great news just broke literally within the last 10 minutes or so uh, that this is a quote from the Disclosed TV Twitter feed. A US federal judge sides with Attorney General Wilson and blocks Biden's vaccine requirement for federal contractors. This is absolutely fantastic. Before I get to a, a little bit more on that real quick, uh, as you know, uh, another judge had blocked the private company. There was this issue around private companies with over 100 employees. Another federal judge blocked that. It's sort of in the courts right now, or not sort of, it's in the courts right now. The Daily Wire is the lead uh, defendant in that. Uh, Harmeet Dillon is the, is the lawyer on that. So that one got hung up on the private side, private company side. But now a federal court is stepping in and saying that the federal contractor thing is even hung up. This is, this is a great great moment. We've got a little bit more from uh, Becker News. The judge granted a preliminary injunction which will prohibit the government from enforcing any such mandate. Now the third time federal judges have sided with Attorney General Wilson and blocked enforcement of Biden administration vaccine requirements. This is really, really spectacular news. And for all of us that are worried about America, worried whether this thing is working anymore, whether we have separation of powers, whether we've handed all the power to the president, all of that stuff. It's like, it shows you there's some fight left in the system. There are individual people, in this case, judges who are saying, I still will stand up for what's right. I will not let the president decide what private companies must do whether federal contractors or just basic companies who work with the federal government on a little project, meaning if the federal government is building a building and you're a contractor who comes in because you do some lighting or you do some landscaping, that you have to have all your people vaccinated too. It was absolutely bananas to begin with. And this is like, it's just great news. It's just great news. It does not matter what you think about vaccines. If you are vaccinated and you wanna vaccinate everyone around you and you never wanna leave your house, and as I always say, wrap your head in saran wrap and all that good stuff, that's just wonderful. This is a different issue. This is about whether a top-down system will decide what you inject yourself with, when you inject it, how many times you inject it, and how long you must bow to them uh, before they give you some of your freedoms back. So this is a great, great moment. That's how we're starting off the show. We got four stories for you. Remember this Hillary Clinton woman? She's back and just saying a whole bunch of stuff that you know, just, just, it's Hillary Clinton. Eh, we'll throw to that. Uh, then Joe Biden and his administration, they've basically admitted that they coordinate stories with the media. Surprise, surprise. It's like, we all know that they do it, but now they're actually 
like straight up admitting it. We'll get to that. Lori Lightfoot, the uh, mayor of Chicago, who's broken her own vaccine mandates a million times and defunded the police and has brought in every woke, idiotic, leftist, progressive policy possible. Now she's blaming store owners for the crime. It's the store owners who aren't doing as much, basically uh, blaming the victims. Uh, and then finally, I saw this video yesterday. It's actually quite extraordinary. It's from right before the lockdowns. Uh, it's a Holocaust survivor, someone who survived from Auschwitz, talking about the creep of authoritarianism and what it was like before they put people into the concentration camps. It's really, really extraordinary. And I know that everyone makes Nazi comparisons and we've, we've butchered these words. We've, we've butchered history. It's really unfortunate. But I saw this video yesterday and I said, we have to, we have to show this um, because I think you will see the parallels. Uh, to today's society. So uh, those are the four stories for today. Before I get to any of that, I wanna talk to you guys about Genucel. You know, take a quick look in the mirror. You see those bags under your eyes? Not under mine though. Imagine them gone. You can get rid of that puffiness just in time for the holiday season. Introducing Genucel plant stem cell therapy for bags and puffiness under the eyes. You know, when I look back on that first PragerU video I did, I was stressed, I wasn't sleeping much, and I see big bags under my eyes, but no more people. My assistant told me she's enjoying the Genucel products. We receive so much that she's sharing them with family and friends. She really does love them. Shout out to Helen. Uh, better yet, with Genucel's immediate effects, you'll see results in the first 12 hours guaranteed or your money back. From now until Christmas, Genucel's most popular package is 60% off at lovegenucel.com slash Dave. That's 60%. Treat yourself and a loved one to the absolute best skincare in the world. Just go to love, G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash Dave and enter my special promo code Dave for an extra special holiday present. That's lovegenucel.com slash Dave, lovegenucel.com slash Dave. And now back to me. All right, Hillary Clinton, she's back. Just when you thought that politics wasn't crazy enough, we haven't heard from Hillary in a while. Well, she gave a speech the other day explaining what feminism means to her, and I'm fairly certain she needs a time machine. Take a look. When people ask me, well, what does feminism mean? Or what does it mean to be a feminist? I say it means that you are in favor for the full and equal participation of women in political, civil, economic, and cultural life. And that... That is a positive statement. That is an affirmative call to action. Yeah, no shit, lady. Everybody believes that, but that has nothing to do with modern feminism. Everyone, you cannot find someone. I would welcome you to look for them, hunt them down, bring them to me tied up, and show me the person in America right now who doesn't believe that women should have full participation in political, civil, economic, and cultural life. Everyone believes that. When men and women are different. Men and women make different choices. Men tend to like things more, so they become engineers. Women tend to like people more, so they might become nurses at a higher rate. Uh, but that's okay, men and women are different. So what Hillary is describing there is first wave feminism. She's talking about feminism from 1960s. Let's make sure women are fully equal, right? And we know the gender pay gap doesn't exist. If you don't believe me on that, and I know you probably believe me, but a lot of your friends don't, might I recommend the PragerU video that Christina Hoff Summers did on the myth of the gender pay gap. It simply doesn't exist. Men and women make different choices. They do different careers, and that's just fine. You know, it's actually kind of cool that often, and for the most part of history, that women stayed home and raised the kids. And if the father could have one job that could support everything, it was pretty sweet. Then women traded a lot of that in so that they put their career first. And it's like, is anyone happier because of that? Now they should have every opportunity to do all of those things. Uh, but I can tell you this, my dad worked very hard for many, many years. He retired about a year and a half ago at 70 something years old, worked at the same company for about 40 years, commuted two hours a day on the Long Island Railroad uh, into Manhattan so that he could afford us a good life. And my mom, fortunately, for my formative years, uh, for me and my brother, and my sister, my mom was able to be a stay-at-home mom and took good care of us and opened the door when we got home from school and made sure we had snacks and made our lunch and made our breakfast and all of that stuff. And it was pretty freaking good. And then when we were all out of the house, my mom 
went back into the workforce and became a nursery school teacher. That's a beautiful thing. Men and women are different. So what Hillary's saying there actually is correct, and I like to give credit where credit is due, except she's saying something that's utterly meaningless relative to modern feminism, right? Modern feminism is that men should beat women in wrestling, right? Biological men should beat women in wrestling. That's a feminist position of now. We know all of this nonsense. The, uh, what is she again, Rachel Levine? She is the secretary of something or other in the health services, something, something. You know who I'm talking about. The biological man named Rachel Levine, that's just fine. I'll even refer to him as a her. <laughs> uh, she was, we we're being told, is the first female, tra or the first female health secretary, something like that. That's what the Surgeon General said. That's what the Biden administration said. And it's like, no. She's not a female, she's a trans woman. Okay, that's just fine. This is a man who chooses to live his life as a woman, trans person, okay? I'm not even, I'm not casting aspersions on that or even pacing judgment on that. But the modern feminist movement has feminists applauding as a biological man becomes the first trans health secretary or whatever, what is she? She's the health secretary, the deputy health secretary of health of something, something. She doesn't look that healthy, but okay, whatever. Um, so anyway, the point here is that yes, Hillary, you are right. And in the way you define feminism, that women should be able to do the same shit men do if they wanna do it, and maybe they do and maybe they don't, I'm on board with, with you, Hillary. But you're giving a speech from 1974. You're not giving a speech from uh, 2021. So get with the times, Hillary, if you're watching. Just come on, you're, you're, you're on your way. You're gonna be all right. Uh, speaking of political people and people that aren't really with the times, uh, Joe Biden, who as you know, is the acting president of the United States. This is a man who uh, gives speeches every now and again and then accidentally when he goes off teleprompter always says that he's gonna get in trouble when he starts telling you the truth or he loses his train of thought or fumbles and mumbles or runs away from questions or they hide him or all, all this stuff. Nonetheless, the guy is supposedly the president. Uh, now it is coming out that basically the administration is coordinating with mainstream media because they don't like some of the coverage they're getting. Now, before I read you the, the quotes from the Daily Wire here, really think about how crazy this is. We had four years of the orange man being president where every single story was about racism and xenophobia and this is Hitler and a democracy is over and everything. There's basically in the mainstream, there's really no criticism of Biden. You know, like, sure, we're having supply chain problems. Inflation is a disaster in Afghanistan, like the list goes on and on. But there's really no criticism, real criticism of Biden. They either blame it on Trump or it's not, you know, Biden's doing the best he can. He released two days worth of gas. You know, the guy's trying. He released two days worth of gas. That's funny. Uh, anyway, uh, the administration basically is coordinating now with mainstream media on how they should cover them. Uh, we've got some info here from the Daily Wire. Uh, CNN reported the White House not happy with news media coverage. News media's coverage of the supply chain and economy has been working behind the scenes trying to reshape cover coverage in its favor. Senior White House and administration officials, including NEC Deputy Directors David Kamen and Bharat Ramuti, along with uh, Envoy John Porsari, have been briefing major newsrooms over the past week, a source tells me. The officials have been discussing with newsroom trends pertaining to job creation, economic growth, supply chains, and more. The basic argument that has been made that the country's economy is in much better shape than it was last year. I'm told the conversations have been productive with anchors and reporters and producers getting to talk with the officials. Biden's approval rating is so low that he has had a lower approval rating than every governor in the US and his approval rating has dipped to as low as 18% in one state. So first off on the Biden approval rating thing, I mean, this is the man, he got 81 million votes and don't you doubt it. His approval rating is just absolutely in the tank. Okay, that doesn't matter. Uh, this idea though, that administration officials go to newsrooms, talk to news anchors, talk to reporters and journalists and help them craft coverage. Does that sound like journalism? to you, does that sound like? Michael, can you get me the definition of the word journalism? We're gonna get the definition, the very definition of the word. Does that sound like journalism or does that sound like scripting? Does that sound like uh, getting an approved narrative across, right? If you're going into a room and you're trying to get people 
to say the things that you want them to say. So that's what they're doing. They're administration officials. Oh, well, no, the economy is better than uh, you think it is, and we're going to show you these things. And that, that sounds like what Hollywood would do, not what journalism would do. I've got the very definition of the word journalism. Journalism is the production and distribution of reports on current events based on facts and supported with proof or evidence. Well, that sounds like journalism as we knew it, not journalism as we know it. Anyway, I suppose this doesn't surprise any of you because obviously it didn't surprise me, but it was worth mentioning because it's like the administration's admitting it. Like we know all the stuff they do behind the scenes, right? They leak things to the New York Times. They leak things to the Washington Post. They cover up things when it doesn't fit the narrative. But they're literally right in front of our faces saying, guys, in essence, what they're saying is, guys, we hand them the script. We talk to the news anchors. Wonder if they talk to Chris Cuomo. Wonder if they talk to Don Lamont. Wonder if they talk to, talk to some of these people. You know, it's like, and then you watch this stuff and you think you're getting fact-based or proof or evidence-based reporting from honest people. And what you're actually getting is Pravda. You're actually just getting talking points from the administration. You don't need talking points from an administration to go down the street like I can over here and basically still see all of these boarded up stores or virtually every single store, almost without exception, saying $15 an hour, we're hiring. People can't get people to work because people are now on the government dole. These companies, these businesses, these diners, these restaurants, they, I assure you they're not thriving. And the idea, I'll try to give the devil his due. If you believe the economy's say a little bit better than it was last year, well, last year we were supposedly in the worst pandemic of all time, the pandemic that the vaccines and old Joe Biden were supposed to fix. So is it possible at some level, at some analysis of the data, that the economy's a little bit better now than when we were in sort of still full lockdowns or half lockdowns or whatever? I suppose that might be true at some level, but you'd have to do a lot of narrative work. You'd have to do a lot of fiction writing to make it really hold water. So anyway, I don't believe these people. That's the uh, bumper sticker for that one. And speaking of people, that I don't believe Lori Lightfoot is the progressive mayor of Chicago. This is a woman who at the height of the pandemic was telling everyone to stay home and stay masked, who was out on the streets unmasked with the rioters as they were burning down her city. As you know, Chicago, which has some of the strictest, if not the strictest gun laws in the country, also has an insane amount of gun murders every weekend. Could we get the numbers on the gun murders of Chicago this past weekend? Uh, she has defunded the police. She has brought in every idiotic progressive policy possible. We've got the numbers already. At least 46 people were shot in Chicago this weekend. Now, why is it, why is it that you wouldn't have heard about that? Hmm, is it that they maybe wanna cover it up because they don't like the skin color of the people who did the shooting and who got shot, it doesn't fit the narrative? Could that be it? Could it also expose that the gun laws that these ridiculous people have don't work at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, she, uh, she defunded the police. Chicago is a freaking nightmare at the moment, much like Portland, much like Seattle, much like San Francisco, much like LA, you guys get it all. Uh, but now she has the gall, the absolute gall to blame the business owners. And this is very much like a video we showed you about two weeks ago. Remember we had a video at a Minnesota where Ilhan Omar, who also defunded the police in Minnesota, where she was blaming the police officers now for not doing their job. So she defunds the police, crime increases, murder increases, general mayhem and chaos ensues. And then she blames the people that she defunded in the first place. Well, here's just a short video of Lori Lightfoot blaming the business owners for not doing enough to protect their own business. I'm disappointed that they're not doing more to take safety uh, and make it a priority. For example, we still have retailers that won't institute um, plans like having security officers in their stores, making sure um, that they've got cameras that are actually operational. Oh God, she's so ridiculous. So you defund the police. People feel that they can commit crimes more. We know about all these DAs who don't prosecute crimes, right? So you're allowed to steal a certain amount of stuff. And instead of her looking in the mirror, although I can get why she doesn't want to look in the mirror, uh, instead of her looking in the mirror and saying, oh, maybe I had something to do with this. Maybe my policies, even though I think I'm a good, tolerant, progressive, and everything I do is good just because I believe it's good, uh, maybe my policies are increasing crime, right? Like I did this, now this happened, maybe there's a connection. <laughs> you know, who knows? 
Uh, instead of doing that, though, she's blaming the business owners for not having more security in their stores. You know, in a sane society, you wouldn't need a lot of security in stores. Um, in Just think, anyone watching this, think about your childhood, wherever you went. If you went to a drugstore, if you went to a clothing store, you went to a sneaker store, usually they didn't have security. Maybe occasionally at some stores, like at a Best Buy, they'd have a guy at the door, right? Because there's a lot of you know, electronic equipment, expensive stuff, but you could walk into a Foot Locker and there wouldn't be a need for a security guy there. You could walk into H&M and it's not like they're really worried that someone's gonna steal that $6 t-shirt. But now all of these stores have security guys and it's because the government is not doing its job. It's in a direct dereliction of its very duty. So she's blaming the stores for not doing enough. The stores which are already struggling, by the way, they're struggling because the economy ain't great, sorry Joe, the stores are struggling, so maybe they can't even afford to have these people there, right? They can't afford to hire more people when you're struggling. It's basic math. I know those guys don't like math either. Um, so what do we do? What do we do when you have a whole bunch of politicians who don't understand or are intentionally doing it? I mean, actually, I'm, I'm tired of giving these people uh, you know, the, the good intentions thing, okay? Like, oh, your intentions are good. Well, if the results are always bad, at some point we can't play that game anymore. So either she wants to destroy Chicago or she's an idiot. I, I don't know what the two options beyond that would be. So she's blaming they're not hiring enough security, even though it should be her job to make sure that, you know, we, we live in a, that her constituents live in a lawful city and they don't have enough cameras there. Well, the cameras are meaningless too because if, she's, if they caught all the people stealing the crap, they wouldn't prosecute them anyway. Right? We know this, I mean, every day you go on Twitter at any given moment, there's just endless looting happening all over the country. And it's like, yeah, it's all caught on video, but they're not gonna do anything about that. So Lori Lightfoot, I don't like you. Uh, all right, let's move on. I, th I think this is, uh, well, this is gonna be a very sobering uh, topic, but I thought this was the right way to end uh, the show today. Um, I saw this video yesterday. Um, it's from January of 2020, which obviously is right before the pandemic. This is a survivor of the Holocaust, a uh, survivor actually of Auschwitz concentration camp. His name is Marion Tursky. Uh, and he gives a talk, we're gonna show you about two minutes of it right now. He's, he was 94 years old at the time of this speech. And he talks really about the step-by-step, step-by-step slow progression of how you demonize people, how you other people, and how authoritarianism creeps in. And I saw this yesterday and I thought I have to show this on the show. Um, it's not current events, but perhaps it's exactly current events. So take a look. One day in those early 1930s, you can read an inscription on the benches. Jews must not sit on these benches. You could say it's unpleasant, it's not fair, it's not right. But after all, there are so many benches around. You can sit somewhere else. Of course you can. There was a swimming pool and over its door an inscription read Jews are forbidden to enter. You could say, well, pleasant this is not, but there are so many places in Berlin where you can take a bath or swim, so many lakes, canals, it's nearly like Venice. At the same time, you can read somewhere else, Jews must not belong to German singing associations. So what? All right, they want to sing, they want to make music, let them just meet somewhere else, they will do their singing. All right. What comes up later is an order, really, more of an order than of an inscription. Non-Aryan children must not play with Aryan children, with the German children. All right, they'll play on their own. And then you read, we only sell bread and food to Jews after 5 p.m. Right, less choice, this makes your life harder. But after all, after 5 p.m. you can still do your shopping. And that's how it is done, step by step, slowly. And they become acquainted with that thought familiar with the idea that they are different people, that they are alien people, that they are the people that carry germs, that cause pandemics. And this now is a horror. What came later was something that developed immediately. Jews could not get jobs, they could not emigrate. And then, quickly, Jews would be sent to ghettos, to Kaunas, to Riga, to my ghetto. Auschwitz did not fall suddenly from the skies. It was pittering, pattering in all those tiny steps. It was approaching until what happened here behind me did happen. 
there's actually nothing that I can add to that. So I will only ask a question before I end the show today, which is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, see you guys tomorrow.